Hi, I'm Pat Tessero. Welcome to Autodesk Simulation TV. Today we're going to look at frequency response analysis using the Autodesk Simulation Mechanical or Multiphysics software. Uh, the question, what happens when my part vibrates? Well, let's take a look here. <coughs> we have a problem, and this problem doesn't show up real well here, but we're going to get a better chance to look at it a little bit later. Uh, we can see here we have a, a pole, and uh, we look at a close-up at the bottom of the pole, and we can see it has some sort of base. This is where this thing is grounded. And this pole is about 25 feet long. It's hollow to 4 inches in diameter. And we can see some red arrows at the top. That's shaking it side to side. So if we had some sort of load that was going to shake something repeatedly over a long period of time, we would want to find the steady state stresses and deflections as a result of that load. So uh, that's what we're going to look at first. And we're going to go through a few steps to make this happen. The two basic steps that uh, we're going to go through is we're going to perform a modal analysis, and that'll be the basis for our frequency response analysis. We can think of a modal analysis as uh, part of the ingredients to our final product. Flour is a, an ingredient to a, a product, such as cake. And if I mix flour and water together, I have glue. But if I put some sugar and other things inside, then I got cake and it's, uh, it's wonderful to eat. So we're going to try to make something a little bit wonderful. We've got a little picture here of what our deflected model might look like and a close-up of uh, the area of interest, which would be at the base. Okay, I said this is a two-step process, and what I'm going to do is back up just a little bit. And I've broken down the recipe for this two-step process. I'm going to go through this list briefly, but we're going to go through it uh, uh, right in front of you using the software in just a few moments. So the first step is to perform the modal analysis. Uh, we're going to import our geometry. We're going to create a mesh on the model, define the material, apply the boundary conditions. Then we're going to perform the analysis, but we're not done there. What we want to do after we perform the analysis is not, much, not as much look at the model and the results as we want to look at the summary file of the analysis. And we want to assess something called modal mass participation factor. If we satisfy a minimum criterion of 80%, then we can move on. If not, we might repeat that process. And then we're going to gather a piece of information from our graphical view of the results, and then we're going to go on to the next step. The next step would be to perform the frequency response analysis. We'll change the analysis type from modal to frequency response. We will adjust the analysis parameters, perform the analysis, and review the results. So we're going to get started right now. Here we are. We have the interface open, and I have the file open dialog. I'm going to select a model to open. And this model was previously created in a CAD package. Uh, this particular model was made in Inventor but uh, we can open models from other sources as well. We have a question about whether we want to import any additional information and I'm just going to first set the analysis type. So uh, we're going to perform the modal analysis first. We would select that from the list of available analysis types and then we are going to generate the mesh on our model. <coughs> so we go to the mesh tab and if we wanted to, we could visit some settings. And uh, s since I've already worked with this model, I'm going to make one change and then generate the mesh on our model. We'll take a look at the model. We'll take a look at the model and check the quality of the mesh. And we could see that we have a uh, regular size mesh on the entire model. I'm going to rotate this so that we can get a better idea of what we're working with. And we can see here that we have some sort of hollow model with uh, four bolt holes on its base. Let's go over to the uh, browser and we can see that we have a red X on the material. I'm just going to get up and point to that right now so that we know that what I'm looking at. I'll do that every once in a while. I'm going to right click on this and choose to edit the material. I'm going to select a basic steel for my material. You may choose a different material for your model. 
Now that I've done that, I'm going to apply my boundary conditions to the model. So I'm going to select using a circle select the surfaces that constitute the four holes on the base. We need to have the model constrain from rigid body motions. So I'll fully fix these four holes and then we are ready to perform our analysis. I'm going to make one change before we go through the next step and I know that we are calculating by default five frequencies. Well this is a symmetric model and I know that if I have a certain number of frequencies in the Y direction then I'll have an equal number of very similar frequencies in the X direction so I'm just going to change this to an equal number or an even number so six will be the number I'll choose. Let's perform the analysis. And now that we have results, like I said before, we're not going to look at the uh, graphical representation first. We're going to look at the summary of the analysis. So we'll click on the Report tab, and in the bottom left of our model tree, we'll click on Summary under Natural Frequency. And then we'll be able to scroll down until we see something called Modal Effective Mass or Participant participation factor and we want to check in the X and the Y directions. We could see here that we've achieved 85 percent of the modal effective mass in the X direction. We could also see just below that that we obtained just about the same amount of modal effective mass in the Y direction. This is good. If I did not achieve this amount in the anticipated direction of loading I would return to my analysis parameters request more frequencies, and then perform the analysis again, review this log file to ensure that I satisfy this amount. I've done that. Let's take a look at the results. We'll gather a little piece of information, and uh, I want to load this model at the top, and I've already determined what the load will be. So I could select a node, and I can inquire on the results and gather the node number. I'm just going to copy that. We're going to return back to the FEA editor, I'm going to change the analysis type from the modal analysis to the frequency response analysis type. This will create a new design scenario. I don't make any further changes with the geometry, with the material properties, or the boundary conditions. I do everything next from within the analysis parameter screen. This screen looks different than the one we saw before. Each analysis type has a slightly different appearance for the analysis parameters. At the top, I could see from which design scenario I will use the modal analysis results. By default, it reads one, and I'm going to enter in what kind of excitation frequencies I should expect. In this particular case, I'm applying one frequency of 11.8 hertz. This frequency represents a 10 meter per second wind load and causing shedding vortices on this pool. I'm going to enter a small damping ratio because I'm interested in the maximum response of the system. Now I define my load for this frequency and I have two types of load that I can apply, an acceleration or a force. In this example I'm going to apply an 8 pound force that oscillates at 11.8 hertz. Now that I've defined those three tabs, I'm going to go back to the excited node tab, indicate my node of excitation that I've collected from my modal analysis results, indicate this will be a force input and that's in the x direction, and lastly I'll define the scaling factor as one. I have enough information now but if I wanted to, I said that I could perform two types of loading on, for a frequency response analysis. For this analysis, I'm choosing to excite a particular node at the top of the model, but I could also ex uh, accelerate the base of the model where the boundary conditions are applied. That would be a different way of applying a load. I'll choose OK, OK again, and then run the analysis. Now that we've obtained our results, we could see 
by default, we will see the displacement results. Uh, 0.2 inches about is our maximum deflection at the top of our 25 foot pole. That's not too great. We could also see the von Mises stress, for example. And if I were to choose to look at the place of maximum stress, I'll see that that occurs at the base of the model. So I can zoom in here. And I'll, say, I'll see that I have equal and opposite stresses on both sides. And this is a von Mises stress. The uh, stress is always positive. This concludes our presentation today. Thank you very much.